Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce uh, one of our own, West River Lieutenant Governor, who will be coming and also introducing our governor. We'll give it up to Lieutenant Governor Larry Roden. Well, what a privilege it is to be here today. Uh, we don't get many audiences quite as friendly as this, so it's pretty relaxed. <laughs> And also, I get to introduce the governor. I get to introduce the best governor in the United States of America. I told you this was going to be easy, right? <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, when we got our new batch of uh, yard signs in the four by eights, I just held my breath until I saw the first one and <laughs> so they spent many thousands of dollars. I got my name on there. I'm good. <laughs> well, look, you all know me and you all know the governor and you know both, you know both of our hearts. You know, this, since the day that I became uh, an elected official in the state of South Dakota back in 2000, uh, that I worked and the governor worked on pro-life issues and as advocates for the unborn, but in those two decades, I can tell you that I've met more, no one more dedicated to the purpose of protecting the unborn than our governor. Earlier this year, we celebrated when the Supreme Court of the United States did what all of us had worked a lifetime to get done, and that was overturning Roe versus Wade. The court did that in the Dobbs, Dobbs decision, and that decision we will all remember for the rest of our lives when the court finally returned the issue of abortion back to the states where it belongs. That weekend after Dobbs' decision, there was only one pro-life elected leader in the nation that stood up on the national stage and said she was proudly pro-life. And when the extreme left, uh, the left wing of the media and the television networks needed to know who would stand up for the unborn and stand for the pro-life movement, and take the questions from the pit of vipers, our biased journalists, about the Dobbs decision, they knew that there was one pro-life leader who they could talk to, and that was Christy Nome. She took all the questions, she appeared on CNN, she appeared on CBS, and she appeared on every national show that needed a pro-life leader. And behind the scenes, Governor Nome and our team worked with Susan B. Anthony List and National Right to Life and the Americans United for Life because these groups all knew that we had reached a key moment in our 50 plus year fight for life. And they, needed, they knew that their movement needed the right person. It needed one person, the right person, to stand up and take the heat. And that person was none other than the governor of the state of South Dakota, Christy Nome. So I will say this. I have been proud to be lieutenant governor since the day the governor asked me to come alongside her as a running mate. But I don't know in those four years if I've ever been more proud than that weekend after the Dobbs decision. Christy Nome doesn't just talk the talk. She walks the walk and she has stood up for women. She has stood up for unborn babies, and she has stood up for our families. It is indeed my privilege to bring to the stage our nation's leading pro-life governor, Governor Christy Nome. Thank you. <clears throat> well, it's so humbling and honoring to be with all of you. And I want to thank those of you in the room who've supported the Lieutenant Governor and I and our families as we've continued to lead this state and, and up, be trustworthy of everything we commit to you when we say we want to hold these positions to follow through with that. I think it always surprises people when I start to explain to them every single day as we're going about our business and meeting with different groups and 
is, is this, people do not understand that we're in your, when you're in positions of leadership, and especially as governor and lieutenant governor of a state like South Dakota, you make dozens of decisions every single day that either back up life or undermine it. Every agency has a different decision, a regulation, an administrative rule that either defends life or whittles it away and devalues it. And that's something that I think a lot of people don't realize is that leadership has consequences. Not just in what we say at key moments that make people aware of, of how important their vote is or how important it is that people are educated and have all the facts, but yet when we're sitting in those rooms that nobody really gets to see the hours and hours of work making decisions, running agencies and, and directing how programs will be run, that 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 leadership and who that person is matters too. And so many of you um, get up every day and go and live your life and witness to people and, and to talk about the value of protecting life. Thank you so much for doing that, and, but continue to educate people on the importance of the fact that what we've seen the last several years in this country is not just a devaluation of the United States of America and our freedom, but a devaluation of life and that we need to continue to stand up and be hope and, and be life to people and show that there is a state in this country that's very different than many of the others. There's a state here that, that stands for families, stands to support life and make sure that we are walking alongside people who find themselves in an unplanned or crisis situation. I'm so glad that my husband Brian is with me today uh, as well, and then I've also got Cassidy is on your board, and she's in the youth program right now running that with us. Our family is, is very, very, um, you know, just supportive of the work that Right to Life does and, and what you do in this state to educate people and to draw people to the Lord and draw people to uh, this issue and to make sure that they know how we're making decisions and the importance of it every day. Uh, means the world to us. It's not something that we just do in our jobs every day, but it's something that, that our whole family does together, and it means a lot to each of us. You know, I would just say that our, our country is divided. Uh, and what this has done is it has taken a decision. The overturning of Roe was something that we should celebrate, but also what it does is return the responsibility back to the state. We've never seen that before, those of us sitting in this room. The responsibility rests on our shoulders now. Our legislature will be discussing this issue. It will, this discussion will be much closer to home. I think that's appropriate that we do that. That's what we have been hoping for, but just know that the battle's not over. It just got a lot closer to home and it's in our front yard now. And your legislators will matter. How articulately they can speak the truth is going to matter. Um, how they're unified in this issue will matter. And I would ask you that you become engaged knowing that the battle's not over, it's changed. Um, and here in South Dakota, we are proudly standing to defend babies in the womb, but that we'll have to continue to do that. We'll continue to have to work together to make sure that that happens. This, this country needs the Lord. That's what it comes down to. It comes down to the fact that, that the, this country needs the Lord. People ask me sometimes if I get worried, concerned, or fearful and my staff knows that when they write something for me that they want me to say, they should never use those words, worried, concerned, or fearful, because our words have power. What we speak has power. It changes people. It affects them. That even if there's times where I maybe start to feel that way, that I should not speak them out loud. That God's given us power, love, a sound mind. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. Yes. Correct? Correct. So we boldly speak truth and go forward. But I wanted to share a story with you before I close. Um, because I can't give long speeches lately. I just had back surgery, so I'm not supposed to stand more than 10 minutes, and aren't you lucky? I'm giving a lot of really short speeches lately. So, um, but I want to talk about a moment that changed my heart in how I approach people in my life. I remember when I was serving in Congress, and I had just gotten elected to go represent South Dakota and Washington, D.C., and I'd been there about a year and a half, two, well, it was probably two years, uh, and close to that. But anyways, it was a State of the Union address that President Obama was giving. And I'd been there and had enough experience in the policy and the debates that were happening that I knew what was going on, and I was listening to President Obama speak, and as the words were coming out of his mouth, I was completely shocked by how distorted he was making the truth. In fact, the man was standing up there lying to the American people. In fact, I couldn't even sit in my seat. I remember pacing on the back of the House floor back and forth, thinking about 
what on earth is going on here? How can we have a leader of our country directly lying to the public to try to become more popular and to try to get his way in an agenda passed that doesn't line up with what our founders fought for to give us in this greatest country that the world has ever known, the greatest experiment this world has ever known based on personal responsibility and freedom. Anyways, as I was walking back and forth, I found myself starting to pray for him, but I was praying God confuse his speech. Help him to forget his words, dear Jesus. <laughs> Everything that comes out of his mouth, would you please just make sure that the American people can't hear it, that it falls on deaf ears. Help him for the first time to become so confused that he has no idea where he is. I mean, this president we have today, that happens every day. But that didn't happen very often to President Obama. But anyways, it was I was praying that way, walking up back and forth and pacing on the back of the house floor, and all of a sudden, I felt the conviction of the Lord land on me like a ton of bricks, and I realized how disobedient I was being, that Scripture specifically calls us to pray for our leaders, to pray for them, that God would protect them, give them wisdom, and that they would have the heart of the Lord, and that I was the one who was being disobedient. At that point in time, uh, I changed and I started to pray for him. And was it easy? No, it wasn't. But I decided that even though he was saying things that I didn't like and things around me were in turmoil and, and I was uneasy and didn't like what I was seeing, I was still going to be obedient. And from that point in time, that's, Brian, and my number one goal. There's so many joyous days that we get serving in the role that you've given us. There's also been a lot of really hard days. We feel like every single day there's constant attacks coming. And I will tell you, it's very clear to us that it's spiritual attacks most of the time. But I will tell you, at the end of the day, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how difficult it is, we still recognize the responsibility of being obedient. And that God has called us to love people. And that in a snap of a finger or a blink of an eye, God can change people's hearts and change this nation overnight. And wouldn't that be a miracle? So we have much to celebrate. We have much to talk about. But I want you to know, even in this state, in your community, there's almost 50% of the people in this state that would vote against every single one of us over this issue today. They could think that 99% of the other things that we've done is right. But they're ready in five weeks to go vote against us because of this issue. So you think about who's representing you here. If you don't work for them, they won't be here. You won't have these leaders here, and you won't have a state that will continue to defend life. It'll be very, very different. Sometimes we're so blessed in South Dakota, we forget how wonderful it is. It can change. I need you to leave here and go talk to people about the importance of leadership, the importance of having people who are obedient to the Lord who represent you and work for you and how wonderful this state is. May God bless you. May God bless the great state of South Dakota. Have a wonderful convention.